Let me quote the wise Homer Simpson who said, fear is the cause and solution to all of life's problems. During your four or more years of college, most of the beer you drink will probably be from these little red cups. Maybe even from the end of a funnel. But sometimes we need food. Man cannot live on beer alone. But don't be alarmed. That need not be as intimidating as it sounds because food, even when cooking itself, welcomes the addition of beer. Now any college chef worth his salt knows the many wondrous values of this fine worldly beverage. Beer has the ability to infuse complex flavors into foods in a way that mere water never could. Dark stouts can impart a rich, deep, bitter undertone to stews and chilies, whereas pale ales and pilsners impart a crisp, hoppy taste to seafood or sausages. I mean, even a beer can stuck up a chicken's will help keep it moist while roasting. You know, beer truly is the college chef's secret weapon. It's cheap, tasty, and since the odds are you have a can or a bottle lying around somewhere right now, Supply is rarely an issue. <laughs> well said. Today we're going to be preparing one of my favorite delicacies. Beer boiled sausage grinders with grilled onions and peppers and a nice ale mustard. First we're going to need to find ourselves some form of sausage. Now a butcher or a specialty shop would probably give us a better quality or value than a local supermarket. But if your school's out in the sticks and all you got is a 7-Eleven or a Quickie Mart, then a good old package of Hebrew Nationals will do the trick just fine. Now for the beer. There's an old saying that says you should never cook with a wine that you wouldn't drink. Now, when it comes to beer, I'll drink just about anything, so really any beer is gonna be fine for this dish. But today, to give these Franks a little extra kick, I've decided to go with a medium-bodied pale ale. Now don't let the moniker pale fool you into thinking there's anything light about these beers. Pale is actually contain more complexity than their lager cousins. I know my beer, but to explain some of the science behind it, I present to you the professor of the University School of Chemistry and Cocktails. Beer is a clever choice of ingredients, Aaron. Very few liquids can conjure up such intense flavor characterization. It can be described as sweet, sour, dry, and even sharp. It can also conjure up tastes of citrus, pines, and my personal favorite, the bitter coca. Now, ale differs from lager because of the top yeast fermentation process and its infusion of hops. And these specific hops come from the plant Humulus lupulus, which is a close cousin to another plant you might be familiar with, cannabis. Now, let's not confuse the pale ales with the brown ale and the India pale ale, even though the India pale ale is closely related. The brown ale seems to be a little too sweet, and the India pale ale's intense bitterness is just a little too much and takes away from the meats instead of enhancing it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor. Now for the cooking. First, we're gonna start by adding a couple bottles of our beer of choice to our preheated kettle or skillet. And as we're waiting for the beer to boil, here's a little something of interest. And we're back. The beer's now boiling. I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple cloves of garlic. Three ought to do the trick. We're gonna smash these to get a little bit of the peel off and then just plop them right in there with the beer. I'm gonna take a cube of chicken or beef bouillon, whatever you guys like. This happens to be chicken. And we're gonna add that to the beer as well. Now once that's boiling, we're just gonna go ahead and drop the franks right in there. If that sounds weird, that's probably because this cooking method has its origins in Germany. And if there's three things that Germans know, it's beer, sausage, and weird. All right, we're gonna go ahead and open up our package of sausage or Franks of choice and put them right into the beer mixture. Now you'll notice we don't have enough beer in there to completely cover the hot dogs. So you'll wanna keep moving them throughout to make sure they cook evenly. We're gonna let them boil in there for about 15 minutes, depending on how strong of a beer flavor you do want. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up the white onion and our peppers. So as we do this, let me tell you that the pepper color is entirely up to you. We have uh, green, orange, and yellow here, but you can really get whatever color you want. Make sure you peel off the outside. Nobody likes that outside layer. Now we are also going to cut up a little portion of three different peppers. Now a great trick when cutting bell peppers to avoid having to de-seed them is just to cut little sections all the way down to the bottom 
and then peel it up and pull back. Then you'll notice that the seeds stay intact and you won't have to clean it. Now we're gonna cut all the peppers into nice thin strips. So some nice, decently thick slices. Now that our peppers and onions are all chopped up, I'm gonna go ahead and place them into a bowl. This is so that we can lightly toss them with a little bit of oil and also add some salt and pepper before we put them on the grill. This is a vegetable oil. You can feel free to use a little bit of olive oil or whatever you have around. A little dash of salt, maybe a little more. And some pepper. This is fresh ground, but you can use whatever kind you have. All right, we'll give this a good toss and we're gonna put those right onto the preheated grill. Now, while those are going, we're gonna check on the dogs. Make sure that they are cooking evenly, mix those around. Well, now that the onions and peppers are cooking and the dogs are boiling, we have another minute. So let's check out something interesting. Really? Really? Yeah, okay. All right, these should be good now. The peppers are still on the grill and the dogs are done. I'm gonna turn down the heat and we're gonna pull those off. You'll notice that we have a pan full of beer and I hate to waste beer, but don't you worry, I'm not gonna drink it. We're gonna actually use this to make our delicious mustard. And take a couple shots of this really, really hot beer mixture and put it directly into this mixing bowl. Now we're gonna steal a few of our onions that are on this grill. Just a little bit ought to do the trick and we are gonna mince those up nice and fine to add to our beer mixture. Be careful to avoid your fingers and also keep in mind that this is very hot. Okay, now that those are all chopped up, we're gonna scoop them into the beer. Great trick for doing this is to use the backside of your knife so you won't make your blade dull by dragging it across the cutting surface. We will crack open our mustard and put a good four or five heaping spoonfuls in there. We're gonna really make sure we can lather up the dogs with this stuff and it'll make these hot dogs taste fantastic at the end. And we're gonna let that sit for a little while. All right, now our peppers are probably done. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them all off the grill directly to the cutting surface. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the grill all the way back up to the maximum heat. That's gonna go ahead and get really hot and then we're gonna put the dogs right on there. They're gonna get some nice grill lines and get a nice crispy outside. We can quickly give these a nice basic chop, keep them pretty chunky, nothing difficult. All right, don't those look pretty? All right, we've let the grill return to its maximum heat, so now we're gonna go ahead and throw the sausages right back on there. I'm gonna put them right on there. Okay, now we're gonna shut that lid and let those grill. Now while the dogs are grilling is a great time to toast your buns if you'd like. So we're gonna go ahead and open them up and put them in the toaster oven on just a short cycle how to do it. All right, well as these dogs continue to get their grill marks and our buns are toasting, we have another moment of free time for another visual aid. Now I'm almost scared, but let's see what we have. All right, and we're back. All right, the last of our buns have just finished toasting, so I'm gonna pull those out. Now we are gonna take our mustard, and we're gonna go ahead and just lather them up with the mustard. Nice and heavy. I'm gonna go ahead and throw one in the bun. Throw some peppers on top. All right, now let's get a nice plate. Check that out. Gentlemen. Shared, this whole meal costs less than five bucks each, including the brew. How good do these dogs look? Seriously. This recipe is a great way to turn an ordinary dog into an extraordinary one. Prost. All right, who's up?